AWS S3 is a really basic service that allows us to store files in the cloud. CloudFront is a more advanced service that allows us to take those files stored in an S3 bucket and distribute them globally to significantly reduce latency when people request our files. On top of that, we get a lot more power over CloudFront than we do S3, and we can add custom domain names and SSL certificates and do a bunch of other things in CloudFront. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to host a React app using CloudFront and set up a custom domain name with an SSL certificate so that you can access your site over HTTPS. Now you can deploy a website just to S3 with a custom domain name and I covered all of that in a separate video if you want to check that out. It is a little bit simpler but again you have less control and you can't serve your website over HTTPS. So let's take a look at how to do this with CloudFront and first we'll obviously need a React app and here I have a really basic React app that I built using Vite but you could use something like Create React App too uh, and it just has a couple of pages and what I need to do right now is build my project so that I can get the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files that I'll end up actually hosting with CloudFront. So now that I've built this, I should have a folder called dist, or this will be build if you've been using Create React App. And inside of here, you'll have an index.html file and any other static assets, uh, CSS, JavaScript, and anything else. So in order to start using CloudFront, we actually first have to create an S3 bucket. So I'm gonna create a new bucket here, and it doesn't matter what we call it, where we put it, or any of the other details, we just need to have a bucket that we can put the files into. So uh, I'll just call this my site, and it has to be unique, so uh, for a YouTube demo, that should be unique enough, um, and that's it. I'm just gonna create a new bucket with all the default private settings. Because like I said, this is just gonna store the files and then we're gonna use CloudFront to actually set this up as a website. So now that I've created this bucket, I'm gonna go in here and I need to upload all of those files. And we can do this a couple ways uh, and it's really nice to use the AWS CLI to do this and I'll show you how to do that later on in the video. But for now, I'm just gonna drag and drop this straight into S3 and now all of the, actually I have to click upload, but after that, all of the uh, website files are now uploaded. The React app now exists on the S3 bucket. So now that the S3 bucket part is done, we can go over to CloudFront and create a new CloudFront distribution. And the origin for this CloudFront distribution is going to be the S3 bucket that was just set up because it's gonna take those files, copy them globally, and then we can configure how they can be accessed over the internet. If we scroll down to the bucket access, we wanna select yes, use OAI, which is origin access identity, I think, oh yeah, right there. Um, and we wanna create a new OAI, and this basically allows us to uh, leave our S3 bucket as private, so nothing can access the bucket itself, and any access to our website files has to be done through CloudFront. So we can just click create here, that's pretty basic, it'll do it all for us, and then yes, update the bucket policy, so that creating this CloudFront distribution will update the S3 bucket in this way to just give CloudFront access and nothing else. Uh, and then we can scroll down and leave most of these settings as the default settings. Uh, I want to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. So if anyone goes to my website over HTTP, just forward them straight to HTTPS. Uh, don't ever allow access over HTTP. Um, because it's just a static website, get and head is all I need. Uh, I don't need to restrict viewer access or anything like that here. All of this stuff is fine as the default settings. Here we can select where the files from the S3 bucket will get copied to, uh, and all edge locations is best for performance. So no matter where someone is in the world, when they make a request to get your website, they'll get it from the closest location. But if you wanted to save a bit of money, you could only use North America and Europe or this other option down here, but I'm gonna leave all edge locations on for this. And then we come down to the alternate domain name section, and this is where we set up a custom domain name. And without this, we'll get a domain name from CloudFront, and it'll be a very long, ugly domain name, but we probably want our own custom domain. So in here, I can click uh, add item to add a domain name, but in order to actually do this correctly, we first need to have a domain name set up in Route 53. So I'm just gonna head over to Route 53 right now in a separate tab so we can see what that looks like because I have a hosted zone already set up 
with the domain name sammeachward.xyz. And I set this up in a separate video. So if you haven't got a hosted zone set up already, check out that video first, set up a domain name. I'll leave a link in the description to that video and then come back to this one so you can use that custom domain. So I'm gonna use the domain name sammeachward.xyz and I could use a subdomain here like um, mysite.sammeachward.xyz but I'm just gonna use the root domain name here. So I add that in as the alternate domain name and then to make sure this works over HTTPS, I need to have a custom SSL certificate. So here we have to request a new certificate. So I'm gonna click that button there through the AWS certificate manager. So in here, I'm gonna put in the domain name that I wanna request the certificate for. Uh, and if you had a subdomain, again, you would just add the, the sub part here. Um, but that's it. I'm just gonna put the domain name there. We want DNS validation. So it just gets validated through Route 53. Uh, and then I click request. So then we get to this page where it says pending validation. So I need to click on the ID of this certificate, scroll down and click this create records in route 53 button. So it can actually create those records and validate my domain name for me. So I'll click the create records button there. Uh, and it's pending validation right now. Um, and this should only take a minute or two. Uh, but we need to wait for this to turn green before we can continue on to the next step. So I'll just skip ahead to that now. So it's been a minute and that has now been issued to me. So I can head back over to CloudFront and click this little refresh button right here. And then from this drop down menu, I should now be able to see that certificate for sammeachward.xyz. So I need to select that. And then I'm gonna leave the security policy just as the recommended version here. And then this default root object right here, because this is a static website, we want to say that anytime we make a request to this CloudFront distribution to serve up the index.html file, and that is the entry point into the React app is the index.html file. So always serve that up. Uh, and then everything else can be left as the default. So we're gonna click this create distribution orange button here and this will set everything up. And it will take a little bit of time for CloudFront to set all of these things up. We can see it's currently deploying. Uh, at some point that will change, I think, to just deployed. But in the meantime, while we wait, we should head back over to Route 53 and I'm gonna click on my sammeachward.xyz hosted zone because now we need to create a record for the CloudFront distribution. So I'm gonna click create record here and we just want simple routing. This is in the wizard view. If you're on the quick create, just click the button at the top to go to wizard view. Uh, and we're gonna create a new simple route. So define simple record here. Uh, and I don't have a subdomain, it's just sammeachward.xyz. Um, but if you had a subdomain, you would put the sub part here. Uh, and we want to choose an endpoint to a CloudFront distribution. So I'm gonna click CloudFront distribution and then I should only be able to choose the CloudFront distribution that I created that matches sammeachward.xyz. Uh, so it has this ID D3BC3. So if I head back over to CloudFront and go to my distributions, this is the one I just made and that is the domain name for it. So I'm gonna go back to Route 53 and verify this and define my simple record, create records. And this can take a little bit of time to propagate too. So it probably will take around half an hour to a couple of hours until I'll actually be able to go to sammeachward.xyz and see my site. But while we wait for this, there is one more thing we need to do in CloudFront, and that is to go back to the distribution that we just made and create a new error page. So I'm gonna create a custom error response here. And the reason we wanna do this is because when we're hosting a React app, a single page application, we really are just serving up the index.html file. That's it, and everything is done from that file. And if we use React Router or something like that, people can go to different routes. I can go to slash homepage, slash contact page, whatever. But we're never serving up a file called contact page. We're always just serving up index.html and then allowing our front-end JavaScript code to handle the rest of it. And anytime we try to request something that doesn't exist, a page that doesn't exist in CloudFront, it's gonna respond with a 403 status code. So what I wanna do is anytime it wants to respond with 403, I'm gonna say, don't do that. Let's customize the error response and let's just respond with the index.html file and the status code of uh, 200 because most likely our app is requesting something that doesn't exist because we're using React Router or something like that. And we just wanna get the index.html file to the user so that we can allow our JavaScript code to do whatever it needs to do. So once we've got that set up, I'm gonna click create custom error response. 
And now CloudFront should be completely set up. It's probably hasn't finished deploying completely and Route 53 hasn't finished yet, but all of the settings should be set up so that everything will work once this is done. So since this is a video, I'm just gonna skip ahead to the point where all of this is working and then we'll do a few more things. While you're waiting, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos and consider joining the channel membership if you'd like to support me so I can make more of these tutorial videos. Okay, so this is working for me now. This is my basic React app that I have. It just has the V landing page and I use React Router to create multiple pages. So I have another page here and homepage and the other page just makes an Ajax request to get a random Kanye West quote. So. That is the entire site and it is working. It's at sandwichward.xyz. It's uh, being served over to HTTPS and it's all being distributed over CloudFront, which is nice. Now, the next thing I want to address is what if we have to make an update to this website? What if I have to update some of the code somewhere? So I'm just going to go into my app here uh, and create a new P tag uh, and just write, uh, I don't know, some update. Okay. So what I want is that this app, once it's deployed, there'll be another bit of text under here just saying some update, that's it. So the first thing I need to do once I make an update and once I've tested it locally is to rebuild the project. So I'm gonna go yarn build. And then if I open this folder up again, I have my dist folder, and this is where I have those built assets. And I need to get these updated versions of the files into S3. So I can just come back into the S3 bucket and drag and drop those files the same way that I did before. And that will re-upload them and overwrite the existing ones there. So the files in S3 are now updated. I now have my updated version of the site. But if I refresh my website here from, I should probably update that quote. Uh, so, I'm not gonna see the update. And this is because CloudFront does a lot of caching. So we won't see that update for a while. I think, you know, it could be 24 hours until that update actually propagates through. So another thing we need to do is tell our CloudFront distribution that there's been an update to these files and that it should invalidate the caches. So back in CloudFront on our distribution, we can click on the invalidations tab and create a new invalidation. And I just wanna invalidate all the files. It's a static website, there aren't that many files anyway. So I'm gonna create the invalidation that way. And once this is done, it's currently in progress. Once this is done, we should see this page updated. So if I refresh, yeah, there we go. There is the updated code. So anytime you have an update that you wanna to deploy to CloudFront, you have to upload those files to S3 and then invalidate those files within CloudFront so that you can actually see those updates. And there's one more thing I wanna show you here because doing this manually can be a little bit tedious. Anytime you wanna make an update, you have to first run yarn build, then you have to drag and drop files into S3, then you have to come into the actual CloudFront distribution and invalidate those files. So that's kind of all annoying. It's really nice to be able to do that through the AWS CLI. And I have another video on setting up the AWS CLI. So if you haven't got that set up, go check out my video. But once you have that set up, you can use scripts to interact with AWS however you want. And the thing I want to point out right now is how you can sync up your files from your local computer to an S3 bucket. So there's just a command here and I'll link this in the description too. But I'm going to throw this into my package JSON. I could create a bash script if I wanted to, but I think it's easier to just do it through uh, package JSON for now. Um, so I'm going to call this sync. And what I need to do is first replace these quotes there we go so in here i'll put in the bucket name and i cannot remember what the bucket name was uh let's take a look my site for a youtube demo okay so i'm going to put that in here the directory path so this is where the files exist locally uh this is going to be the current directory uh slash dist dist so all the files in there, actually I think I, yeah. All the files in there. So AWS S3 sync my dist folder to my S3 bucket. And since I actually have different profiles set up, I'm gonna need to specify my profile here. And since I used a non-default region, I'm gonna have to say that I'm using CA Central 
one. Again, I cover this in a separate video. But this command now should just replace any files that I have in S3 with the files that I currently have in my distribution folder. So uh, any time that I make an update, actually I'll make another update now, another page, some update again, for example. Uh, I can run that yarn build to build the actual application into those files. And then I could run yarn sync, which if I did that correctly, should run that command. And I did not do that correctly. Uh, I think I don't need the slash start at the end. I just specify the location of the directory. Yep, there we go. So now I can see it's uploading everything in the distribution folder to my S3 bucket. So we probably won't be able to tell right now that anything has changed because it's all HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that's been minified and bundled. But these should be the updated files. So I don't need to go into S3 anymore. I can just close that tab. Anytime I make an update, I can just push it that way. Then I need one more bit of code to invalidate the CloudFront distribution. And I just happen to have that code copied and pasted. So I'm gonna paste that in here. Um, and all I need is the distribution ID. So in CloudFront, there's the distribution ID. Uh, so it looks like this, but I'll put all the code examples in the description, but we're gonna tell uh, CloudFront, I've got my profile and region in there again. Uh, this is gonna be CA central one. Uh, create an invalidation for this distribution. So I'll just throw the distribution ID in there, four paths, every path, just invalidate every single file. So my steps now will be yarn build, then if I wanna push that to S3, yarn sync, and then if I wanna invalidate my CloudFront distribution, I can run yarn invalidate. And it will invalidate eventually, like this. these updates will be seen on the site uh, at some point, I think it's about 24 hours. But if I want it to be immediate, then I can just run this line of code right here and that will invalidate it for us. So that update that I made, I just said uh, some update again, that should be visible on the app. There it is, some update again. And I could just repeat this process anytime I want. So uh, my final update, whatever. Uh, again, yarn build, because I got to build those static assets. Then I want to sync it to my S3 bucket. And then I want to invalidate my CloudFront distribution so that it uses the new files from S3. Uh, and then that should be it. And you could put this all into a single bash script or, or something, but um, yeah, that's it. It's now working. I'm now able to deploy my React app to CloudFront to distribute my app globally with low latency and a custom domain name that is served up over HTTPS.